Welcome to the demonstration of Tsunami Deployer. During this demonstration, we will perform a migration from Exchange Public Folders to SharePoint 2010 using Tsunami Deployer. This presentation will go over the four main steps of the migration process. First, we will export the source content from public folders. This can be done from within the deployer or as a standalone process. We will then load the content into a deployer project. Next, we'll perform the virtual deployment along with all of its relevant configurations. And finally, we'll commit our migration specifications to SharePoint 2010. We will start by creating a new deployer project. When we click on File, New, Deployer will create a new project for us to work on. We are prompted to give our project a name. We'll call it Demo. We'll now specify the project folder. Next, we'll choose our source and target systems from the list. For this demo, we'll choose to deploy from Exchange Public Folders and deploy to our target, SharePoint 2010. Our new project is now ready for migration. As you can see, a deployer project is divided into two areas. The top area is for the source content, in our case, the content that will be extracted from Exchange. And the bottom area is for our target, SharePoint 2010. In order to load content, we must first export it. This is done by right-clicking the source panel of the deployer window and selecting Export Exchange to TDX, or clicking the Export button on the top. This opens the Tsunami Exchange Exporter. Under the Items tab, we can select and deselect which types of items we wish to export. Under the Advanced Settings tab, we decide how to handle security settings, message file attachments, mail message bodies, and RSS items. Using these settings, attachments of mail items will be exported as a part of the mail's MSG file. This allows us to migrate mail items into either a document library or a generic list. The next step will be to navigate through the public folders and select the content we wish to export. We can browse through our Tsunami demo folder to view its contents, such as contacts, documents, mail items, notes, tasks, and a calendar with several appointments. For this presentation, we'll select the entire demo folder. When exporting large amounts of content, the filter can be used to export only certain items which comply with certain conditions. For example, we can choose to only export content that was sent before or after a set date. We'll now choose a destination folder for the export, where all extracted data will be saved on the file system. The exporter begins the export process. At this point, the exporter is extracting the content from the source, along with all of its structure, metadata, and security information. The exported content is then saved to the file system in a file format that the deployer can read, the TDX. The export folder will contain the actual files and data extracted from Exchange, along with the TDX and STDX files, which are XML files that contain all the information regarding the exported content. When the export is done, we can name our Exchange export and load the content to the source panel in Deployer. Deployer is now done loading and we can explore the hierarchy of the public folders content and see that the same exported content now resides in the Deployer project, along with all of its metadata. A calendar with several appointments, contacts, some documents, mail items, notes, and some tasks. Similar to the look and feel of Windows Explorer, Deployer displays the content from the source with a tree view on the left and with a list view on the right. This allows us to easily browse through our content and understand our content structure. In the target panel of Deployer, we'll load the data from our target, SharePoint 2010. This is done by right-clicking the target panel and then connect to SharePoint. We now have the connection wizard. We are required to specify the connection details. First, we'll fill in our server address. This can be done by entering the server's name or IP address. 
To make sure you have the correct information, please consult with your system administrator. Next, we enter our credentials. The user connecting to SharePoint must have sufficient privileges in order for Deployer to write the changes to SharePoint. Please refer to our Tsunami Deployer User Guide for more information regarding permissions. After the connection to the SharePoint server was made, we choose which web applications we would like to load into our project. We are now able to choose how we would like to load our SharePoint structure. It is recommended to load the minimum amount of content required for your specific migration project. First, we decide which sites to load into the project. For this demonstration, we'll select the site collection named Demo. When the Read Subsites option is checked, Deployer will read all subsites under the parent site. We now move on to reading the content. We can choose to read none of the lists, only the libraries, or all of the lists. The same applies for reading items. We can read none of the items, the latest version only, or all versions. When no sites and no lists are selected, the loading process is expedited, and we are able to reload any content from our SharePoint target panel at any time. Under the Active Directory tab, we can select the domains we would like to read into the project. This enables Deployer to retrieve a list of all available users and groups. When we are satisfied with our structure, we click Next and Done, and Deployer begins reading the selected content into our Deployer project. Deployer is able to read all necessary content from the SharePoint server, including custom and global templates. Once Deployer is done loading, we can explore the hierarchy of the SharePoint content. Now that both our source and target are loaded into our project, we begin our deploy phase and start performing our virtual migration. To deploy content from our source to our target, we can use several methods. The first and easiest of which is to drag and drop our selected content to the desired destination in the target. We'll select our Tsunami Demo folder and drag it to our demo site collection. The Deploy Wizard appears to guide us through the process of deploying the selected items to SharePoint. In the first step, we choose if we would like to deploy the files along with their security. Choosing to deploy the items without their security settings will make the deployment process faster. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll choose not to deploy security. We start by specifying the global settings. Here we can decide how Deployer will name files with duplicate file names. We can also choose the specific number of versions to be deployed. Under the Lists tab, we are able to control some of the list settings in SharePoint, such as supporting major and minor versions and attachments. In the Define Deployment Structure panel, we have the ability to control the hierarchy of our deployment, including site and list templates, folders, and so on. The deployer automatically suggests how to deploy the items from Exchange Public folders to the corresponding SharePoint items. For example, since we have chosen to migrate our Tsunami demo folder as a subsite of our demo site collection, we must now choose how this subsite will be created. We can choose a site template from the drop down menu, which has all of the default SharePoint templates. We also have the ability to select a custom site template. For example, We'll choose the pre-created custom template for our site and move on to determine the structure below it. The calendar will be migrated as an existing calendar. The contacts folder will be migrated as a new contacts list. We'll migrate our documents folder as a new document library. We'll choose to migrate the mail folder as a new custom list. The notes will be migrated as a new custom list as well. The task will be migrated as an existing tasks list, and again, we have the ability to select the various options. We'll continue with the default options. Deployer also gives us the option to migrate our content with or without the hierarchy structure. If we choose Flat Deploy, the items are all migrated on the same level and the hierarchy is not deployed. Now we will perform the property mapping step. On the left, Deployer displays a list of properties that exist in the items and containers exported from Exchange, and on the right, we can view a list of properties that are available for us from the target SharePoint. 
Deployer automatically suggests some of the basic mappings. For example, the created and modified properties are already mapped. Deployer enables us to map any remaining properties according to our own specifications. To do so, we select the property from the source list and the matching property from the target list and click Map. The link above can be used in case the target has fewer properties than the source. This will tell Deployer to add any of the missing properties we select, and all corresponding values. We'll choose to maintain the body of our mail items to ensure that the body of our messages are migrated to SharePoint. Now that we have finished mapping our properties, we need to map the associated values of these properties. For example, the users in our calendar appointments can be mapped to the users in the target. We'll choose to map the source user, John Hartman, to the corresponding user in the target. We are now ready to deploy. During this phase, Deployer applies all of the deployment settings and mappings that we've selected. When the deployment is finished, we can open the deploy reports. These reports allow us to view any errors and warnings that may have occurred during the virtual deployment. This enables us to make any modifications prior to the commit phase. Here we see that several of the names have been changed to comply with SharePoint's naming conventions. We'll move on since this will not affect our deployment. Within Deployer, we can view the properties in the target panel and confirm that the metadata of the items which we plan to migrate to SharePoint are all preserved according to our specifications. Now, assuming that we're satisfied with the migration, we'll commit the changes to SharePoint. By committing our project, we tell Deployer to perform all the changes that we made virtually and write these changes to SharePoint. During the commit, the actual content migration physically copies the source items to the target library, list, or folder on the SharePoint site, while updating their metadata properties according to the Tsunami Deployer project definitions. We can click View to open the commit report and see that the changes we made during our virtual deployment are being written to SharePoint. Once the commit has finished, we'll right-click the new site and choose Open in order to open it in SharePoint via Internet Explorer. We can take a look at all the site content and see that the migration was successful. This concludes our Tsunami Deployer demonstration for the migration of content from Exchange Public Folders to SharePoint 2010. We thank you for your time and welcome you to visit our website in order to download an evaluation version of Tsunami Deployer for Exchange and learn more about the Tsunami family of products.